In this part of section 2.2, we will talk about the area of a sector of a circle. So here's what we know. We know that the area of a circle is given by the formula pi r squared. This will be for the f area of the complete circle with the radius of r. But instead of the area of the complete circle, what if we just want the area of a sector created by angle theta, which is which, which would be this highlighted area over here. Now here's what we know. We know that theta will be the 360, so theta will be the same proportion of 360 as the area created by that sector will be to the entire area of the circle, which is pi r squared. So we get the formula theta over 360 equals to the area of the sector over pi r squared. And if we simply multiply both sides by pi r squared to get the area of the sector by itself, then we get area of the sector is given is theta over 360 times pi r squared, which is the formula here, if theta is measured in degrees. Now what if theta is measured in radians? So remember that 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. So instead of 360 degrees, we can say that theta is to 2 pi radians, which represents uh, the entire circle. And that equals to the area of the sector divided by pi r squared, which is going to be the area of the entire circle. We can do the same thing. To get the area of the sector by itself, we can multiply both sides by pi r squared. When we do that, we get the area of the sector by itself, and that's given by pi r squared times theta over 2 pi. But notice that because we're in radians, in this case, theta has to also be in radians. The pi's can cross cancel, so this leaves us with 1 half times theta times r squared. And this is the formula for the area of the sector when your angle uh, theta is in radians. There's a typo here. So in your notes, please fix this. This should be a 1 half theta r squared and not a 1 half theta pi r squared. But what I recommend, instead of using memorizing the formulas, is that you memorize this proportion. Theta over 360 equals area of the sector over pi r squared, or theta over 2 pi equals the area of the sector over pi r squared. And that's how I will be working it out, because I think understanding is a lot better than memorizing in, in, in any given concept. So this one says, find the area of the sector formed by the angle of 290 degrees with a radius of 3 centimeters. So uh, just to give you guys a visual, this is an angle here. This is 0 degrees. So 290 is going to be like 90, 180, 270, 290. This will be 290 degrees, this angle here. And we want the area of the sector that is formed by that angle. And remember, this angle is 290 degrees. So we're going to set up our ratio that 290 degrees is to 360 as the area of the sector created by 290 is to the area of the entire circle, which is going to be pi times r squared. Now if I simplify this a little bit further, I'm going to say that 290 over 360 equals to the area of the sector over 9 pi. And then to get the area of the sector by itself, we're going to multiply both sides by 9 pi. Now in your calculator, you can just type in 9 pi times 290 over 360, and we will get that the area of the sector is 22.777 uh, centimeters squared. Area is always going to be in square units, because look, notice what we're doing. We're taking the 3 centimeters and we're squaring it. So because we square 3 centimeters, our units will be centimeters squared. Okay, the next example, find the area of the circle with a radius of 14 feet, find by the central angle of 1.5 radians. So because we have radians, um, doesn't mean we apply a different formula. We're going to use the same concept. So we're going to say um, that your angle theta, which is given by 1.5 radians, but because our angle is in radians, we're not going to use 360. Instead, we're going to use 2 pi radians because 360 is equivalent to 2 pi. And that equals to the area of the sector divided by pi r squared, where the radius is 14 feet. To get the area of the sector by itself, um, we're going to multiply both sides by pi r squared. So our radius is 14. So if you multiply both sides by pi times 14 squared, then this cancels out. On the left side, we get pi times 14 squared. In your calculator, type in this expression pi times 14 squared times 1.5 over 2 pi. If you wanted to, you can 
cancel out these pi's. So what you're typing in is 14 squared times 1.5 over 2. And if you were to do that, this would give you 147 square feet. Now let's talk about angular and linear velocity. Angular velocity is the measure of how fast a central angle is changing and is represented by this symbol. Theta is a measure of the central angle at time t, and theta must be in radians. Omega is expressed in radians per unit of time. That unit of time can change. So let's let's first think about what's happening here. Okay, what's happening? You have this particle that's moving around the circle. So the question is, as this particle moving is moving around the circle, how fast is angle theta changing? And that is called angular velocity. So uh, the formula for angular velocity is theta over t, uh, where theta has to be in radians. And t is time. So time could be in seconds, could be in minutes, could be in hours. That, that changes. This is our formula. Omega, which is our angular velocity, is equal to theta over t, where once again theta has to be in radians. So recall that rate time time equals the distance. Now we're going to talk about linear velocity. So linear velocity is how fast is a distance changing with respect to time. Okay, so we know that rate times time equals to distance. Rate is same as velocity. So the rate, if you divide both sides by time, is going to equal to distance over time. So velocity is equal to distance over time. Now remember from earlier in this uh, section, the distance traveled around the circle is given by s equals to r times theta. So if you have a circle and this is angle theta, then the distance around the circle, so the, the length of that sector, is going to be given by the formula r times theta, where r is the radius, theta is the angle. So if you replace that distance with, with r times theta, then velocity is equal to distance over time, and distance is r theta, so velocity is equal to r times theta over t. But remember that omega, or angular velocity, is just equal to theta over time. So we can split this up into r times theta over time. And theta over time, that's equal to our angular velocity. Therefore, our linear velocity is equal to the radius times omega, which is the angular velocity. So more formulas. Two formulas you have to absolutely know. One that omega, the angular velocity, is equal to theta over time, where theta is in radians, and the linear velocity is equal to r times theta over time, which is r times omega. In other words, r times angular velocity, and in both cases, theta is always going to be in radians. So once again, here is a summary of the formulas. Omega is theta over time. Velocity is going to be the distance, which is s over time, the distance s is given by r theta over time, which is the same thing as saying r times the angular velocity. Okay, let's take a look at an example. A hamster running in a wheel of the radius 12, so this is a wheel, the wheel has a radius of 12, and the hamster can spill, spin one revolution, so from here to here, when you complete one revolution, it takes 10 seconds. What is the angular velocity? Now on an exam, you might, uh, you might blank out. You might say, I don't even know where to start. So my hint to you is that you, you should always start with the formula. What is the formula for angular velocity? Sometimes seeing a formula written down reminds you what you should be looking for. So our, for, our formula for angular velocity is angular velocity omega is equal to theta over time, where theta is the angle in radians. So we're gonna say, all right, I'm looking for my angular velocity. So my angular velocity omega is going to be theta over time. So I need to know what is my theta and what is my time. 
Now let's think about what the hamster is doing. The hamster completes one revolution. One revolution is the entire circle. That's equal to two pi radians. Now I'm not going to use 360 degrees because remember for angular or linear velocity, theta always has to be in radians. So our theta is two pi because that completes one circle. So the hamster completes one circle, which is two pi radians in 10 seconds. That's it. One revolution, which is two pi radians, is completed in 10 seconds, and that is our angular velocity. If I simplify this, uh, two goes into itself once, it goes into 10 five times. So this will be pi over five radians per second. And this is what we want our units to be. So this will be our angular velocity. Now it says, at what linear velocity is the hamster running? Okay, so you see this and you are like, oh my God, I don't remember how to do this. And that's okay, that might happen. It happens to everybody, it happens to me. So the, the hint I'm gonna give you is when you blank out, start with the formula. What is the formula for linear velocity? It's r times omega, where omega is the uh, angular velocity. So I know that my linear velocity is equal to the radius times omega, which is my angular velocity. All right, so I know both things. I know that the radius is 12. My angular velocity is pi over five. So my linear velocity is going to be 12 times pi over five, which is going to be 12 pi over five um, centimeters per second. So the main thing I want you to get from this is that when you blank out, always write down the formula first. Okay, another question, but this time um, our units are going to change. So it says, a hamster running in a wheel of 11 centimeters spins a wheel at 44 revolutions per minute. So before we were told that the hamster completes one revolution in 10 seconds, but now we're saying that the hamster completes 44 revolutions in one minute. And the question is, what is the angular velocity of the wheel? Okay, so you see the angular velocity, you have no idea where to start, uh, which sometimes happens. And so I'm gonna say that, okay, I'll start with the formula. My formula is theta over time. Now remember that one revolution is two pi radians, which is same as 360 degrees. All right, so here's what we need to know. We need to know that one revolution is going to be two pi radians. Now, the question here is the time. How long does it take to complete one revolution? We know that 44 revolutions are completed in one minute, but we wanna know, well, 44 revolutions are completed in one minute. How long does it take for one revolution? So for this, we can set up a simple ratio. We can say that 44 revolutions are completed in one minute. So how many minutes does it take to complete one revolution? Okay. 44 revolutions are, are completed in one minute, then one revolution is completed in how many minutes? And for this, we can cross multiply. So the x multiplies to the left, the one multiplies to the right. So we're gonna have x times 44 equals to one times one, which is just one. So x is going to be one over 44. Now let's be mindful of the units here. We're talking about minutes, okay, it's x minutes. So it's going to be one over 44 minutes. But we want this in radians per second, not per minute. So now we have to do another conversion. We want to know, so one revolution is completed in 1 44th of a minute. What is that in seconds? So here's what we know. We know that one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. 
So I'm going to replace this minute with 60 seconds because I know that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So I'm going to do a substitution. So I know that x is equal to 1 44th of a minute, but one minute is 60 seconds. So all I'm doing is I'm, I'm substituting this minute with 60 seconds. So x is going to be 60 over 44. And now we are in seconds, which is exactly what we, what we need. And if I reduce this, 60 over 44, you can divide these both by 4. This will give you 15 over 11 seconds. Okay, so now we can say that one revolution, which is 2 pi radians, is completed in 15 over 11 seconds. Remember, we can't divide by a fraction. So since we cannot divide by a fraction, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is going to be 11 over 15. So these cross out, these cross out. Uh, on the numerator, what we have is we have 2 pi times 11 over 15. So imagine this is like 2 pi over 1. So I'm just going to multiply the numerators. This will give me 22 pi. I'm going to multiply the denominators. 1 times 15 is 15. And my units, I know that 2 pi, uh, that's in radians. And then I converted this to seconds on the denominator. So my answer is going to be 22 pi over 15 radians per second. And that is going to be my angular velocity. My linear velocity, v, is much more simple. It's equal to the radius times the angular velocity. So my radius is 11. My angular velocity is 22 pi over 15. Okay, and if you multiply this, we're going to get 242 pi over 15. And this, this will be in centimeters per second. Now, I know this was a kind of a complicated problem. So come to class prepared with questions so I can answer whatever questions you guys may have about this. And then this, uh, this last example we will do in class.